tricky. Um, calcium is still element 20, and uranium is element 92. I just looked on my periodic table. Actually, I knew it in my head. And then zinc is 30. 30. Now, the top of the, of the left side adds up to 278, yep. right? But we're going to subtract what? 70 and 4. We have 4 neutrons kicking out, so minus this adds up to 74, so that's 204? Yep. But this lead. Uh, 92, 112. This adds up to 112 down here. Minus mm -hmm. 30. It's 92, isn't it? 82. 82. It's lead still. Yep. Yeah. So that's the answer. This, folks, um, expect this on the multiple choice portion of the AP exam. You will see it, and they will give you one of these. Yep. It's easy. It just make sure the top adds and the bottom adds, and yeah. use your predict table, which you'll have. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yep. All right. Oh, yeah, we should just do some yeah, sample ones the, like this. Yeah. So if I have uh, iridium-174, so if I find iridium, iridium is IR if I'm not mistaken. Iridium, actually, now as a side note, let me write this down. IR was 74? 77. 77? Yep. When I write 174, does that, what does that mean? That's its mass number. So that's its mass number, which is 174. And if it goes via alpha particle decay, you have memorized those charts yep. there. So that's a 4, 2... Alpha, you could also put an HE right there. And then we make them add up. But yep. see, you just need to know what this particle is. So you know it breaks into a 4, 2, and plus whatever else. That'd be 170. And you lose 2, it'd be 75. Yep. So R -E. 75 is RE. Found that from the periodic table. Now, if I decay a beta particle, well, platinum is PT. His number is 199, and his or his mass number. His atomic number is 78. If he's going to do the beta particle thing, that's going to make a 0 a negative one beta plus that'll be 199 and then it'll go up that's that one where it goes up one yep and 79 in that gold gold hey Ooh, we just made gold we turned that the, the alchemist dream yeah right we there. turned platinum into gold the only problem of course is I think platinum platinum's more expensive than is gold, more expensive than gold ah darn it positron emission all right so this is going to be sulfur s31 now sulfur's number is like 12? uh 16 16 too far. 16. He's going to make a positron, so that's a 0, 1, E. So I just know my particles, right? Mm -hmm. From that other uh, chart, that'll be 31 and um, 15. 15. Element 15 P. is phosphorus. I don't need this line here. That's a mistake. All right. An electron capture for krypton. I'll do that up here. Krypton 76. That's krypton 36. is 36. And it's going to capture, a capture an electron. electron. So it's a zero, beta negative one, E. So that's going to be 76 and uh, 35, right? It is, yeah. And 35 is bromine. So that's the answer. This is easy, guys. Yeah. Just so, so easy. Yeah. All right, now let's uranium also. Uranium does this mess. Now, we also have some oddness in uh, if you take a uranium 238 molecule, atom, whatever. Mm -hmm. Actually, isotope would be the term. Yep. It actually undergoes an alpha particle decay, and then a beta particle decay, and then another beta particle decay, and then an alpha, and then a beta, and then an alpha, and then a beta, beta, beta particle. And eventually it turns into lead over like uh, a billion years or something. So it's a very, very long period of time. But you can actually, um, well, let's just do one of those. You want to do all of them? Not really, because you can't yeah. really see it. You kinda, we, I think we've you gone through it. You, yeah, you, you get, get the picture. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're going to skip that. All right, now, 18.2, though, um, second to last thing of the, yeah. of the year. Kinetics. Guys, remember kinetics? You remember it? Yeah. And they, basically, it follows what we call first-order kinetics. Remember, you, yeah. you used to write um, the natural log of A equals negative KT plus the natural log of A0. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That's the same thing that applies here. Yeah. Actually, the equations are slightly rewritten. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just... Yeah, but now we're going to use, instead of, when we have radioactive things decay, we're going to use huh? an N. Now, the N stands for the number of nuclei. Yeah. But it also, it is proportional to the mass yeah. of the object. Mm -hmm. So you can actually use mass. So it can be the number of nuclei or the mass. The N0 is the original amount, and the N is the amount at some time T. Yes. And the um, half-life is just this 0.693 over K. We've seen this before. And the rate equals K. And we used to write rate equals K, and we still will for times a to the x power, right, or whatever. But this is first order, so it would always be to the first power. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's take let's a look go. at some examples. Yeah. Math is easy. All right, tectinium-99 used to form pictures of internal organs in the body. Mm. 
um, to excess heart damage. Hopefully this is not a problem we're going to have. All right, the rate constant. My dad had that done. Oh, yeah. You did? did they use tectinium? Uh, I would imagine. Yeah. That's the radioactive dye they stuck in the So the rate system. constant is this. So this is what? This is equal to K. That's your K. What's the half-life? Well, remember the half-life equation, T one-half, equals 0. 0.693 over K. So in this case, that'll be 0. 0.693 over 1.16 times 10 to the minus 1. So what do you get, Mr. Well, Simmons? it helps to have your calculator actually turned on when you put the when you're punching numbers in. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a minute. Okay, there we go. 5.97 hours it would be. Because the unit for K was hours. Yeah. Hours to the minus 1. Hours to the minus 1, right. Okay, so um, now this one's a little different because it's going to say how much. So the half-life, they gave us the half-life, mm -hmm. and we started with a 1 milligram sample mm -hmm. after 335 hours. So we're going to use this equation, the natural log of N over N0 is equal to negative KT, because they have a time, 67 hours. Mm -hmm. That's actually the half-life. That's half -life. the half-life. We're going to have to use that to find K. And 335 is my time. Yep. So this is equal to T, but I need to find K. Now, N0 is, this is N0. Yeah. All right, so let's find K. So K will be equal to 0. 0.693 over the half-life. So that'll be 0. 0.693 divided by 67. You get a pretty tiny number there. Uh, 0. 0.0103. So I'm just going to say the natural log of X over 1 X is my N, because I want to set this up. And the 1 is from the 1.000 yeah, milligram. This is the 1 is from this. If this number is 72, you put mm -hmm. 72, is equal to negative 0 0.0103 times 335. You can put it in your solver or not. But this one you probably wouldn't need to, really. Yeah. And so you get um, 0. Point, so N is equal to 0. Point 0 0.032 0 milligrams. So after 335 hours, you have 0 0.032 milligrams. Yeah. Now let me say something too on this. Um, if you get the AP exam, um, and you get a multiple choice question like this, the interesting thing that they will do is they will almost always give you a even number of half-lives. Does that make yes. sense? And so hopefully I have a problem like that. If not, we're going to make one up. Yeah, All I right. think there is one in here. I think so. All right. Let's do another one. Woodcraft from a Chinese temple has a carbon-14 activity of 24.9 counts per minute as compared to 32 at standard zero age. Yeah, now you said that the number of nuclei was proportional to the mass, but it's also proportional to, to the, the activity of, uh, in yeah. a Geiger counter. So basically this is in, uh -huh. and this is in zero. zero. And I think we're going to solve for time. Uh, yeah, because it wants to know. Yeah, half-life. Yeah, some old temple thing. We have determine the age. How old is it? Yep. So we're using the same equation. We're going to use um, the natural log of n over n0 is equal to negative kt. So we're going to just solve for t now. So the natural log of n, n today is 24.9. Mm. n a long time ago was 32.5. I never have figured out how they knew that, by the way. How do they know that? Um, 5,000 years ago, they didn't have a Geiger counter. I don't know. There's somehow that these guys No, know it's this. based on what the activity of, of a living organism would be today versus something that had has died and then is no longer going through that. Oh. It's no longer replenishing the carbon with the carbon dioxide from the oh, air. I knew that. Okay, yeah. something like that. All right, and K, oh, we got to do K. K is going to be the uh, 0.693 divided by the half-life, which they said was 5,715 years. So this would be a pretty tiny number. 5765, 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4. Solve for t. So, what does this term here, Mr. Sam? We'll work it out. What um, is this term here equal to? The which? log term. Oh, uh, 0. 0766. 0. 0.766 would be equal. Oh, to sorry, log of 0. 0.766, which is negative 0. 0.266. So negative 0. 0.266 would be equal to negative 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth times t. Divide both sides by one point, negative actually, 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth, yep. negative 1.2 times 10 to the minus fourth, and you get t to be what? Uh, 2220. 2220, and that's years. That's years from ago from present. Right. Yeah, so this that's piece of wood, yeah. when that wood died, Yep. Uh, not necessarily when they made the artifact. Right. It was 2,220 years ago. Yep. Okay. All right. We should probably do one of those half-life, even half-life problems. Yeah. You know, Mr. Sanders? Yeah.
So this would be a 